Awesome. Well, we're inside. Let's start heading back to our floating shavasana. So laying back, let the breath start to flow for us. Huge, huge inhales. Nice relaxing exhales. Take a few good breaths like that. Imagine as you're taking these deep breaths, you're tuning into your energy reserves. So maybe you imagine that like a battery or maybe it's like a stew pot. And so imagine your energy reserves and how full or empty is it right now? Imagine your very breath, the act of taking that huge belly breath. Imagine that's helping you to tap right into that deep, visceral part of our body, that energy. So as we're tuning into the energy, the word that we're working on today is a word that we talk about in Ayurveda. The word is ojas, and that's the deepest kind of energy reserve that we have. And if we were to deplete that energy reserve, we'd be in absolute crisis mode to the extent of possible death. And so that's that deepest most vital energy that we have. As we go through our class today, we'll imagine that instead of the battery going into draining mode, we're reversing it. We're in charging mode right now. We're allowing our body to feel good. We're taking huge breaths. And by this movement and breath, we're recharging our entire system and especially the ojas, that very deep reserve, making sure that we lead ourselves toward better health, for better wellness, for better just vitality in general. So that's the image that we're working with today, just helping that battery. So with that to lead us on, let's start to take some nice stretches. Let's extend the arms all the way back behind us. The shoulders will start to wiggle over to the right and over to the left. Take that a couple of nice times. I think of it like moving into some muscle groups that we haven't or don't wiggle often. I imagine that is us discovering little pockets where we can store even more energy. One more time left and right. And right back through the center, right knee into chest. Give that knee a nice hug. That's a nice ankle roll. Right leg extends up to sky, grab on, help it stretch. Just continue to mentally be with this part of the body. Every breath is a new opportunity to invite the pose into a delicious place. A huge inhale. Nice exhale. Then this right foot hooks to that left. Slide the shin in. Let's get into that hip first time today. One more huge breath in. Nice exhale. As we free out this leg, maybe let it extend up to sky before we drop it all the way down. Left knee into chest, hug it. Maybe ankle rolls. We can 
start extending this leg up to sky, grab on and extend up. One more huge breath in, out, and hook the heel back right, slide the shin in. Huge breath. Inhale. Exhale. The leg frees out. Extend to drop. Now leaving both legs inside. Let's grab onto the fabric. We're sitting up inside. And then the fabric gets brought down to the waist area as we take a back bend off the back edge. So hands grab back on. Slide the fabric. The hands. Start to head backwards. If this is a, a little too deep, you can reset the fabric a little bit higher up the back. That'll help you not go too far. Good. So three more breaths, nice and deep. Grab on, gently raise up. We're gonna counter stretch that with a plow pose. So take the fabric as you're sitting up, take just the back end to completely cover shoulders like vampire. The excess goes to waist, and then step the feet in to bring the excess down. We do want the feet in that little blanket in the pocket. So the feet covered, and then once you're there, Shoulders are safe. Let's reach up, hands grab up high, left and right. The feet staying inside the blanket rises up to help us pike up. And then to go into plow pose, both feet start to drop to that space in front of chest, drop to the point where the toes are there, and then that's just holding it easy, comfortable, and plow pose. The hand has a nice counter stretch to the low back compared to the back end that we just took. So for plow pose, I keep the hips right above shoulders. So listen to the back. Stay there long enough to get a nice counter stretch for the back muscle. The back muscle is stretching nicely, wake up. At any point that you'd like to add in other variations, you're welcome to. You could flatten out like a plank. <coughs> you could drop a foot to the floor and take splits. Just listen to your body and what feels beneficial at this point. I'll give you plenty of playtime.
doing awesome. <laughs> I didn't realize you had to like pop those legs for it to actually lock on your feet. Oh, and so I kept losing my. Got it, got it. This is my flippy bit. More or less, we've got the majority out of the inverting part. If you're not out yet, go ahead and start to relax out. Give your head enough time that things feel good. Feels like we're not rushing too much. And you feel at least kind of decent to sit up safely. Go ahead and rise. Let's take some easy stretching. So let's bunch up the fabric to front door. The back arm stretches to the back wall or circles around the head. Another good inhale. Exhale, release, switch sides. Back arm face at the back wall or circles around the head. Inhale, exhale, release, clasp hands behind the back, and as the arms pull away, let the chin drop down to chest, and then roll the head over to the right shoulder, chin back down to chest, and then head gets brought over to left shoulder. Good. Chin back down to chest. Nice inhale. Exhale. Releasing the hands, grab onto the entirety of the fabric. Let's lift the hips right up and out. Beautiful. So from here, fabric's out in front of us. Let's grab on about waist or about shoulder distance. And at the waist, hips go forward, arms go forward. And add in whatever types of wiggles just feel nice for the back. If you left and right wiggles, it could be cat cow wiggles. Inhale, good exhale, soften the knees, roll our way up, going to take right ankle inside the fabric, first really good hamstring stretch, so you could already go for splits, hands up high, thinking weight forward, you're about, you know, just kind of waking it up still, just lean forward, Bring that heart closer to the thigh. Starting to rise up. 
So option to grab on, it would be right hand grabbing onto the left strand if you need it for the balance. And then the leg's gonna go wide and forward. If you'd like to try no arms, that's also fine. But try to stick with the, about the pace of your neighbors. That way we're not whacking. <laughs> Good, let's take another five. Four. Three, two, one. Beautiful. Returning back forward. Left hand grabs onto right strand. Right hand twists open. Beautiful. Return. Both hands on the left side. Standing toes turned to the left. We're bumping the left hand up, the right hand down. If you'd like to sink more weight forward, you're welcome to. of our standing leg, slip the fabric to the thigh, and then we're taking a warrior two. So start off with that right hand in the middle, left hand behind, and then start to sink your weight forward. Try to keep the vertebrae stacked upright rather than sliding into the shoulder. Let's inhale here. And then exhale, both hands reach up on their respective sides, gripping high. Turn your toes and your hips forward. Sink forward. Next inhale. Exhale, the grip is really tight so that we can softly lower onto the back knee. Right hand grabs left. Left hand goes to the back toes. If you tuck the toes, it gives you a couple of extra inches. Once you're here, try to allow hips to go forward another inch. That allows a little bit of a quad stretch while we're here. And we're going to switch the grip. So now left hand grabs to right. And then the right hand drops down like a twisted version of the half double. Another good inhale. And then exhale. Both hands come up. This was a tricky one, but the goal will be to try to slip the fabric down to the ankle and then lean forward. If that's not happening today, just turn your hands to the side and that's where we're gonna head next. That was a little bit easier. So, go how high this lifts the ankle. If there's any weight that you can sink forward, that helps to deepen that tremendous stretch. Oh, the other way. <laughs> <laughs> so, both hands to the left, yeah. And then you'll have to readjust so that the leg looks severe. You got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Good. Beautiful. So if you're ready to drop hands to left, go right ahead. And then you'll have to readjust the, the bottom knee, that left knee forward or backward, so that the leg just kind of hovers to your side. You can lower down to elbows, that might be nice. And again, sink some weight in here.
Another good inhale. Then exhale, continue to walk the elbows to the back of the mat. You could simply go into pigeon pose from there, turning the toes, swivel that in. Or if you'd like a bonus elbow plank first, then you'll step that left foot in, hold in a plank position, you choose how long, and then eventually left leg gently back out to the like this. Bending the hands, tuck the back toes and lift with that knee, three-legged dog. So this one's another one. We're going to try to stay in sync so we don't pick one another, but that right leg is going to come to the side and back. Let's repeat another five and back. Four, three, two, one, now try to slide the foot out of the fabric and right leg comes to the floor for two seconds. Or into elbows is fine. Just relax the hips into that stretch. Prepare to rise up. You choose how you'd like to go. So maybe you come back up to downward facing dog, pedal the legs out a couple of times. Maybe there's a different way you'd like to eventually come up to standing. But choose your own pace. Eventually you'll make your way up. So experience this right leg, how open the whole thing feels. So imagine that's like the battery's quite a bit more charged on that part of the body. So then left ankle in. First easy stretch you choose. Maybe your splits already, hands up, sink weight forward. Maybe this first easy one on the side is just heart down to the thigh. <clears throat> standing leg, rise up. This will be the leg swinging open and closed. So if you need to grip, it's left hand gripping on right side. Otherwise, hands free is fine. And let's go wide and return. Wide, return. Another five, four, three, two, one. Good. Right hand grabs the left side. And then left arm opens up spinal. Turning forward, both hands on right half. Right hand slides up, left hand slides down. Standing toes turn to the right and sink some weight forward. And 
Good, weight back. Fabric slips to thigh. Open the arms. So this left arm is right in the middle. Start to push the tricep into the fabric. And from that, we're able to keep the torso lifted tall as we sink weight forward. This is a good place to do the pelvic floor contraction, the Mula Bandha. Gentle strength being built down there. Beautiful, and switching to warrior one, one hand on each side, pivot the hips to face forward and sink the weight forward. the grip tight, start to softly lower the right knee to floor. And then left hand grabs right side up high, right hand to the heel. Good, we're switching the grip, right hand grabs left. And left hand drops down. Okay, coming back upright. This is the funky one. Try to see if your leg on this side will allow fabric to get ankle. If so, try to just lean forward into it. If not, remember it's okay to just plant hands to the right this time. Three more breaths if you're doing okay. Go to the floor on the right. Readjust your knee so the leg can stay to mirror side. And then perhaps lowering to elbows, sink more weight forward. Now start to walk your elbows to the back of the mat. You can either go directly into pigeon, swiveling the right heel in, or take some plank time, right foot into the fabric. You can always add variations such as bending the knees and then straightening them back out, or bringing hips above shoulders and then flattening them out. Any variations you'd like to play with are fine. Until you're ready for pigeon pose, right leg down. No rush. Toes, we're lifting that knee, three like a dog. Then from there, that left leg kicks to the side, and we're kicking five and return. Return four. 
three, two, one. Good. Slide the foot out of fabric. Bring it directly into left leg for your pose. Take the feet into cobbler's pose, so bottoms of feet touching. Hands will be in prayer position right in the middle of the fabric. And then you'll use that to just start leaning forward. It's a nice supportive version. So you'll note if you're sitting pretty close to fabric, it's a little bit easier. If you scoot all the way to back of mat, lean forward, it pulls it just a little bit deeper. Choose the angle that's going to work best for your body too. Rolling the spine up, the legs open out wide, and then do the same thing, just relaxing back forward. Rolling the spine up. Get the feet to plant in front of you. Walk the hands as high as you can on each side. And then use the arms to just pull us all the way up to stand. Okay, we're walking right up to plumb line. The right foot comes inside the fabric. The side of the foot is there. The knee is swiveling open behind the fabric. Perfect. So from here, Grip moderately high. Try to minimize swinging as you take the left foot just to touch the bottom of the right foot. So once you're there, each arm works its way forward. And this is a stopping spot if you don't want to go any further. If you want to go to the full inversion, your hands will need to be high up to armpit area so the fingers won't get stuck. You'll walk the fabric past each hip bone, and then you'll just start to straighten the arms and go to the inversion. So I'll be here to help if you feel like you're getting stuck coming back out. So go ahead and try this. Try to come all the way up to stand first, and okay. then come into it. Let's see if that one will work for you. Yeah, try to see if you can stand all the way up first. That's okay, it's a hard one. <laughs> if nothing else is good, like straight. <laughs> so another option you could do just to practice the hip opener, just put one foot in and then just re lean forward. That'll get a nice stretch. So if you oh, want to, that's okay, that's okay, go for it. Good. Good, 
not bad, not bad at all. <laughs> That's okay, you'll get there one day. It's a step-by-step -step process. <laughs> but yeah, just know if you want to transition to the stretch now, yep, just go that and sink forward. One leg, make sure to stand about equal time on the other leg. Give your head a break before you come out. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, like, okay, I need to pause for a second. <laughs> Really good arm and leg strength, so good job. <laughs> That's a huge step. <laughs> So I'm not gonna rush you. Sometimes this is people's favorite inversion, so don't feel rushed out. Those that are up, we're just gonna take a shoulder stretch here laying back. Fabric is by shoulder blades, your right arm is going to cross, your left arm is crossing. We're coming up to stand on our own, and then as we lean forward, not allowing fabric to go past shoulders, this should spread the arms to each direction. It's a nice stretch in that spot right in between. Lean back, open the arms. Good. And second side, left arm crosses first, and then right. Standing back up. Lean forward so that the arms get to spread to each direction. Back up. So keeping fabric here for a moment, walk yourself forward and then softly lower one knee and the other knee. And then from here, opening the arms backwards, let the hips go forward. It's a nice gentle back bend. Start to flatten back up, grab on close to shoulders, and then rock yourself back onto feet, and then flatten self out into a nice 90 degree angle, but forward bend. Soften the bend of the knees, roll up to stand, free your arms out, and then fabric comes out in front of you. I'm gonna flip around to this side. So from here, we're gonna try a little um, variation. And so this one does start with the standing inside. So just keep on practicing that one. Um, the right foot is gonna start off inside. I'm gonna try to minimize swinging as we stand inside. And then your right hip is sliding through and your right shoulder is sliding through. Grip over the head so you can face toward backward. 
From there, left foot pushes up high into the fabric and start to inch yourself into a 90 degree angle sit. Good, good work. Okay, so once we're in this 90 degree angle, legs are locked straight. We're gonna drop the left leg to the left side. The shoulders are gonna go toward the, the mirror side, toward the right. And then this left hand, once the shoulders pass the fabric, the left hand is gonna go on the grips of the fabric. Yep, the free right hand grabs the bottom toes that are being back, it's a little quad stretch, it's a little heart opener. Beautiful. When your group is ready to come back in, both legs come inside, bring the shoulders inside, and sometimes right here in the middle, it's fun to try to just balance. See if the hands can release for a moment. Good. Okay. Then we're going to switch sides. So now, the right leg is going to drop out, the left leg takes over holding it. The right leg is dropped to the right. The shoulders need to go to the back wall. And then it's the right hand that grips up high. The shoulders are all the way free. Yes. Yeah, that's it. And then the free hand grabs free toes. Lean back. Good. And when we come back inside this time. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> when you come back inside, let the right leg cross. And then try to inch yourself into kind of like a cross leg seated position. Just another chance to try a little balance. See if the hands can release. Yeah, so it's like a little lotus pose, just a cross leg sit. Good. <laughs> good enough. <laughs> That's a good hip opener right there. <laughs> okay, and when you're ready to come out, each hand drops up high. I'm facing to mirror personally. I'm going to lift my legs up to my arms and then free myself. More or less. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> okay. Now come to the front of the fabric. Wave the fabric out. Once you're there, let's go into a nice little shoulder opener. So the elbows slip inside. The elbows are coming up to, to shoulder height, if not straight up. And then you're walking forward. Just walking forward will naturally pull the, the pecs and the shoulders into a stretch. So you get to choose exactly how that looks. So that bowing the hips forward is one option. Another option is a lunge. One foot stepping forward, the other foot stepping back. So whatever feels like it's a heart opener, a shoulder opener, just good things. That's what we're going. Good. and let's take a break and we'll go into it again. So slide the elbows into the waist and roll the head out for a moment. Loosening up neck tightness. Okay, we'll go into it again. If you did the lunge, take your second foot. Inhale, exhale, come back, elbows into the waist, roll the neck out. Good. So head up, keep this grip of the front end, but turn around and face your back. You're gonna roll about half the fabric into your hands. And then step right up to plumb line. Right knee comes inside. That holds the fabric. So now that the hands go through the center of the fabric and you're trying to find the back end. So spread it out about shoulder width. And when you're ready, dive your belly onto the fabric. You're welcome to free out the shoulders. That can feel really nice to just dangle arms and head down. Nice 
is because it's a gentle arch to the back, but it doesn't require any any activity. It's a nice passive opening. So this is going to be a funky transition. As the arms come in, we're trying to get the elbows underneath the belly. So try to like squeeze those elbows right underneath you. Once you have the elbows underneath you, you're able to press the hips back like a child pose and then press the arms into the fabric to sit up to a nice kneeling place. The funky transition, it requires a little bit of strength. But yeah, send the hips back and then press down to let the torso come up. Good, good, good. Okay, so just a slight core activation. The hands grab onto the back end of the fabric again. Again, shoulder distance is about what I like to do. Come up to a high kneeling point. And now we're locked straight from knees to shoulders. Don't let the hips bend. So like a roller, we roll the arms out. We're in that kneeling plank position and then roll it back into the high kneeling position to start. Good, take that a few times. The arms roll out and squeeze back in. You wanted to hold when you're rolling out. That would be a way to engage the core just a little bit longer. So up to you. Whatever we're doing, whether we're holding or rolling in and out, I'm gonna do a countdown of 10. So 10, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Flat back out to belly. And we're going to turn to one side like a fetal position. You choose which side because we're going to get full. So it's on this nice fetal position. Let's take a few rounds. Let's curl in like that tight little ball. Let's arch up and back, let the spine go as exaggerated as possible. It doesn't have to be fast, but go as deeply curled in, as deeply arching back as possible. Perhaps another three. Two. Good. Grab up high. Switch the hips around. Set your side feet on position. Send the arms out and curl in. Arch back. Curl in. Arch back. Three, two, one. Beautiful. Grab up high, shift onto your hips normal. So this is about our normal Shavasana time. If You'd like a bonus vampire pose before you relax down. This is a point to put into that, get the fabric over the shoulders and rise upside down. If you're satisfied by this point, this is our normal Shavasana. So you're welcome to just lay down also, that's fine. So between those last couple of poses, either vampire or Shavasana, we recognize that the breath is one of the most important things for that recharge of the battery. We don't always think about it, but in life, when craziness starts to happen, we lose track of the breath. It becomes a much more shallow breath. So if you're upside down, take some deep breaths. Experience what it is to breathe deeply upside down. And if you're not upside down, if you're in the Shavasana already, experience that deep belly breath, it's easing you into a beautiful, relaxed state. Imagine that breath through the last few minutes of class. The breath is really the thing that recharges this battery of ours.
we begin to deepen our inhales. Deepen our exhales. Start to introduce movement back to fingers and toes, ankles and wrists. And stretch out in ways that feel good. Perhaps the arms stretch to the back wall and the shoulders get to wiggle right and left. Perhaps you'd like another round of the fetal position, rolling onto one hip, curling in, arching back. Take a minute or so to do any of these movements that return us to the physical body, return us to presence, allow us to check in with the battery. See how charged it is at this point in class. Sooner or later, when you feel pretty good, start to work our way up to a comfortable seated position. And in front of the heart. And here we reconnect with that idea that ojas, that deep reserve of energy that we have, Oftentimes I feel myself going out of balance when I start to tap into that energy reserve. Those weeks when you've had very little sleep, it's compounding and you start to lead to headaches, those types of things. It's, it's, that's how it works for me, tipping out of balance. And so instead here, we're reversing the drawing out of that energy and we're putting the charge back into that deep energy reserve, that ojas, so that all the good activities we have in this week ahead of us, we have the energy for, we have the vitality for, and even the health for. So with this to help lead us on, this ojas, this rejuvenation, let's wrap up the time we shared together with the sound of old. We've been held up. May we be filled with light, happiness, and peace. Namaste.